Today's video is dedicated to exploding carbon wheels. I'm just on my way to meet Dov from Parkour's Wheels now, and we're gonna pump them up until they explode. The pump's going through the cat flap. Yeah. Are you actually gonna do that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so welcome to Dov's garden, the, uh, <laughs> the epicenter of the testing procedure. Sorry, I'm a bit sweaty. Dov makes these wheels, they're called Parkour's, and he's sacrificing two of them, potentially, in the name of science. Regular viewers may remember the video where I exploded with James a alloy knackered rim that we had lying around the shop. I think we broke it. It exploded at 160 psi, but we wanted to expand on that video and see how much pressure you can put inside a carbon wheel. And we've got two different types. This is, like, this is, this is basically cutting edge science now. Yeah. Um, so what we're going to do is we've got a slightly older wheel. This one is a hooked rim. Yeah. Um, which we can show you in a second. What does that mean? So Zip, Envy, a bunch of other brands have released like a cheaper version of... Yeah, so basically the, diff the difference is, I mean, hooked rim means that if you look inside the rim, at the edge you've got a little hook that comes over the side and what that does is that holds the tyre in place um, particularly at higher pressures yeah um, stops it blowing off so obviously by definition a hookless rim um, does away with that hook and relies purely on the pressure outwards within the tyre to seat the beat tyre bead against the edge of the rim and keep it on what we've seen recently is a few different manufacturers come out with hookless rims which means that you have to run a tubeless tyre and you also have to run it at a lower pressure because obviously you've got nothing to stop it blowing off at sort of high pressures. So at the moment, they're restricted to a maximum of 72 and a half PSI. Which is not very much. It's not very much, but you know, if you're running a wider tire, you probably don't need that much. Yeah. You know, if you're running a 28 tubeless, 60 PSI is probably fine unless yeah, yeah, you're, yeah. feels comfortable. you know, a rugby player. But you know, there are always going to be people, people that want to run at a higher pressure and go a little bit higher. So it's going to be interesting to see like whether 72 and a half is a limit or yeah, yeah. whether we can go higher. So okay. both, different depths, so it's not, it's not a perfectly scientific test. It's not it's perfectly different. scientific, but this one's sacrificial. So um, <laughs> okay. yeah, this one can die. In terms of tires we're using, they are matching Schwalbe. So they're both Schwalbe Pro 1. Which both... is not pronounced Schwalbe. How would you pronounce it? Like Schwabble. Schw Schw something like, it's not Schwalbe. One's a slightly newer model than the other just to be able to get it on, but they're both 28s, um, so it's pretty close. And they're new. Yeah, new tyres. New tyres. New tyres, not been ridden. Um, probably <sighs> never will be now. It's just it's so scientific. So what are we expecting to happen? I've had an accident in Mauritius uh, where we overinflated a tyre and the whole wheel exploded and carbon went everywhere. Oh, oh. shit. I yeah. hope that's not going to happen here because I'm guessing that was a, a damaged wheel to start with. Yeah, I mean, never say never, but in theory, what we should see is the tyre should fail before the rim. If anything, if we do break the tubeless tape, you might get a little bit of rim inflation, but that'll probably leak out. So what I'm expecting to see is tyre blows off rim, particularly for the, for the hookless. And then on this one, we'll probably see the tyre of the beat fail, I'd imagine. Is there sealant in there? There is, yeah. Oh man. Because <laughs> this is a proper production, can you get the safety, the, he the equipment? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right, Dov, this is it. First up, hookless rim, rated up to 72 PSI. And let's see how many PSI it takes until it explodes. That's the magic 72. 72. Brilliant. I can see the ceiling. That's 90. 100 and it's making a noise. Oh, look at that ceiling. It's <laughs> 150 PSI. <laughs> I, can, I can hear it. Hundred eighty psi. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> what? Wow. My ears. <laughs> I'm glad I got a filter on this second camera. That wheel is true. The aftermath. I know. Is the wheel okay? Do you know what? The wheel does look actually okay yeah, that's pretty true i mean the tire's not done so well obviously we've got some sealant going on here there 
That's the bead. Wow. Total bead failure. So hookless rim, 180 PSI, and the wheel looks still rideable, we think. <laughs> Round two. Now we're expecting this one to be higher pressure, and uh, yeah, see what happens. I don't know if my ears can take it again. <laughs> well, it's not much slack, is there? From this purpose-made cat flap <laughs> safety shield. Right. So we're starting at 100 PSI. This is the most exercise I've ever done. Oh, we've got movement. Oh, it's making noises. It's 200. <laughs> I think we've got the rim tape broken. A oh. tiny little hole in the rim tape. Now I've got to wait for it to deflate a bit because I am not going out there. <laughs> that tire is just at 180 psi. <laughs> there is literally a bomb in the garden. <laughs> Get out there. Come here. <laughs> <laughs> Heart rate at 180. So there you go. The hooked rim will not explode uh, with the normal track pump. So maybe we revisit this at some point with a more powerful pump and some extreme sealing of the rim because I think the pressure just caused the rim tape to. Uh, separate slightly and the air was going through. New max heart rate. <laughs> so to conclude, that was 220 PSI uh, before we couldn't pump it up anymore. And the rim held the pressure, which is impressive. What do you think the official scientific conclusion there is? I mean, this one did, did well. Like for a, for a wheel that technically, according to ETRTO, should only run at 72 and a half PSI, like, that, that turned out pretty well. I mean, like it, it might just be the, the rim tire combo we got lucky on, but yeah. Seems like hookless isn't as bad as you think. Yeah, this is just to show you what the inside of a hook, hookless rim actually looks like. Um, you can see that there's no, no bead hook on the edge that's holding the tire in place. So the only thing that holds it in place is this little ridge here, which keeps the tire forced against the edge, keeps it inflated. Got rained on a bit. Got quite sweaty as well. This is the most humid day ever. So we're just on the way to go and see Louise race in the women's tour. We're gonna to be doing it at the bicycle shop, so just driving over there now to conclude the exploding wheel experiment. I think if you decide to buy hookless rims, definitely stick to the suggested 75 PSI, but don't ride around worrying about it if you think you've put too much in, because evidently you can still put a lot of pressure in there before they explode. Uh, hopefully we can revisit things and uh, get the other one to explode one day. The reason we managed to hit such a high pressure in that wheel might be down to the tire and rim combination being really good as well. So there's a few other factors to consider. Um, I'm gonna put a link down below to Parkour's wheels if you wanted to check them out. It's Dov's company, he makes some really good stuff aero test them all and there's a load of data on there as well so if you're interested in the wind tunnel data from his testing it's all available on his website he doesn't actually make a hookless wheel at the moment the one he had there was a prototype from the factory but after today's tests maybe he'll make one Hello. i haven't filmed you yet Hi. this is a setup for viewers who didn't catch the video the other day what event are you doing skoda women's the, tour yeah it's a skoda v women's tour which is the replacement for the women's tour, which should have happened this last week in the UK. It's a three-stage race on RGT cycling. Cool. I'm just warming up in Mallorca, which is quite cool. But it's, the technology is blowing my mind. I've got so many screens. How are you doing? You all right? I'm all right, yeah, but my gears aren't right, but hopefully I won't need them much tonight. No, you go. I'll just put it in a big one and go hard, you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> So the whole race is split apart. Lou is now in a chasing group of about 10 riders. Uh, looking at the live stream on the TV, the front group is actually just splitting apart as well. This kind of always happens in e-racing. Everything just goes nuts from the start and then uh, the selection's made pretty early. But we'll see what happens. Lou is now working pretty strong with a small group. Second one, right? It's new. <laughs> That's no use. I tried hard. I don't want to do that again tomorrow. <laughs>